Hello everybody, this is Philly Cuts with another comic book haul, the Hunk Day Haul number 31. It's Wednesday, it's a day in the middle of my work week where I like to go to my local comic book shop in Albany, New York. It's called Earth World Comics. I go there every Wednesday, I pick up some comics, I eat some pizza. It's the middle of my work week and it helps me get through to the weekend. I got a colossal, ginormous stack of comics this week. Probably about 35 comics, you know, all that DC convergence is going... I'm just kidding. Uh, actually, my stack of comics this week is a paltry four comics, okay? I've been kind of sitting out the majority of the convergence event, and I guess I haven't realized how much my stack is reliant upon DC books. This is actually my backlog of comics Meaning, these are comics that I haven't read yet since I started buying comics again. And it's getting kind of big, man. I, I would say it's probably about 30 comics here. Uh, it's getting kind of big. I got lots of stuff that I still got to read. I got some amazing Spider-Mans that I got to read. I got some Batman and Superman I got to read. I got some Catwoman I got to read. I got to read the latest issue of Witches. See, this is my quick haul here. Uh, Autumn Lands, Tooth and Claw, I haven't read. I got Batman 39, I still haven't read. So I got tons of stuff here that I got to read, and I kind of have mixed feelings about it, you know, because up until, oh, I don't know, I would say like a month ago, uh, I've been keeping up with my comics each week. You know, I've been able to read them every week as I go. And I'm kind of having mixed feelings because I don't really want to start to have this huge backlog of like, unread comics and it gets to the point where I'm never going to be able to read them, you know. I already kind of have that problem uh, in my life with video games. Um, I've done videos on that before and I have a huge, ginormous backlog of video games, okay. Like I have tons of video games that I've never played. You like my blanket back there? I didn't straighten up the apartment before the haul. I'm sorry. But I have a huge backlog of games. And, uh, I don't know. My problem with video games is that I don't play too much. It's that I keep buying video games. Like, I always am looking for games that are on sale. And it's like if I see, see games that are on sale, I buy. You know that if they're on really, really low, good sale, I have to buy them. But then, unfortunately, I, I never, like, play them. I must have uh, probably over 100 video games on backlog. I might even have more when you add in and factor in all the digital content, too. That when I go on Xbox, games with gold, and I'm always downloading those games. And PlayStation Plus and their free games. Um, you know, like my hard drives are filling up on both my uh, Xbox One, my 360, my PS3. So I guess that in a way I'm kind of glad that the stacks are getting a little bit less uh, because of convergence because it's going to give me some time to read these books. I don't know if I really want to become a comic collector that just kind of buys the comics and then never reads them. And I'm wondering, like, how many of you guys out there are like that? Are you that kind of collector where you're just kind of buying the books, but you never even read the books? You know, I could see that happening with, like, back issues and when someone goes on these, mo you know, mammoth, like, back issue hauls. I always wonder, like, is the person, like, reading those back issues or is it just kind of like you're accumulating the books, you know, to get the complete set, just to say that you have the complete set? Maybe you're going to delay reading the books until you get a complete set. Like, I could see people doing that. Like, I'm kind of doing that with Amiibos, which I may or may not rant in this video because the stack is so short. But, like, with my Amiibos, I'm not opening them up until I complete the sets. You know, like, with Wave 1, Wave 2, Wave 3, Wave 4. But the problem is, is that there's so many Amiibos that are so hard to get because Nintendo can't seem to produce enough Amiibos. They only seem to be mass-producing 
you know, the Marios, the Luigi's, the Princess Peaches, the Bowser's. And you go into any department store like Target or Toys R Us, and the only Amiibos that you see are those ones, are the common ones. Whereas when you're trying to find like a Meta Knight or a Little Mac or even a, a Star Fox, you can't find them anywhere unless you pay a scalper on, you know, eBay or on Amazon. And I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. So, I don't know. I'll get back to that later, folks. But I just want to know. Let me know how bad is your backlog of books. How bad is your backlog stack? And uh, I really want to start tackling this because, I don't know, I just feel guilty about it. You know, I'm spending all this money on comics and I'm not, I'm not reading them now because I'm buying so many. You know, I was usually averaging about 10 books a week. So maybe because this Convergence event is going on, it's going to help me. All right, so we only got four books this week. BPRD, Dark Horse Comics, Mignola, the master, the creator, Arcudi, the writer. There's a new artist on this team, Peter Schneinjergberg. I don't know what it is. It's some kind of Scandinavian name. And the coloring of Dave Stewart. This was a tremendous issue. I read through the whole thing. I actually read three of these books already because my stack was so short. So I'm actually reading these quick, but this really focuses on Johan Krauss, and he is the probably the strangest member of BPRD. He uh, is actually like a gas. He's like a vapor, okay? Um, he used to be kind of like this medium. You know, he was able to resurrect the dead, and he now resides in a gaseous form and he actually has to stay in a containment suit. He is in a containment suit. Let me see if I can get you guys a good picture. You know, he has to stay in this containment suit or else, you know, his body will, like, I guess, dissipate. So there he is there. And he's kind of a faceless wonder, you see? He just kind of has, like, a dome for, like, a face. There's his suit. And he's in this containment suit. And this whole issue is focused on him. And he's depressed. He's going through depression. Um, the rest of the BPRD team seems to have a lot of issues with him. They're not a big fan of Johann Krauss. They just don't like him. Things are not going well. He's even having nightmares. There he is when he was in human form and he was a medium. He has these strange water coming out of his hands. His hands are like that now, which I don't want to give too much away because I want you guys to read the book. Um, but he's having nightmares. Other team members are uh, saying you know, to him, stay away from me. I don't trust you. You're a weirdo. Um, he's having terrible, terrible nightmares again. This time you got Abe Sapien in his nightmares. He's in the water. Uh, he kind of has a heart-to-heart -heart with Liz Sherman, who uh, has had her own issues. She's like a py she has like these pyro powers. She's able to think Firestarter. If you ever saw that movie Firestarter with Drew Barrymore, she can kind of conjure up uh, fire and cause these huge, huge firestorms. Um, Liz Sherman actually had a major accident when she was like 11 years old. She used to get so angry, like kids would tease her at school. And she got so angry one time that she actually like incinerated her neighborhood and a whole bunch of people died. And uh, Johann Krauss had some incidents where people died. So they kind of have a heart to heart. Johan, I almost feel like he has like Asperger's. When you read the conversation that he has with Liz Sherman, he just has like no tact or no couth when he tries to talk to Liz Sherman about how she has dealt in her life with killing people. Like how, how have you gone through your life and how have you been able to adjust after killing people? But the manner in which he does it, and says it, it makes you wonder, like, man, does this guy, is he on, like, the spectrum or something? Um, but he has a, it's a great heart-to-heart. -heart. 
he kind of talks about how he doesn't feel human anymore. He feels disconnected. Liz try to get tries to give him some suggestions. They have some very freaky pictures of Liz here because Johan pisses her off so much. Uh, and it's just a really great heart to heart. And the end of this issue is is tremendous and you wonder you know what's gonna happen uh all i gotta say is is that johan makes a pretty drastic decision and it is a pretty big cliffhanger ending probably one of the biggest cliffhanger endings i've i've encountered in a bprd book and and since i started reading bprd again and collecting comics again for the past eight months i know that's not a super long time but it definitely has an impact, and you really, really feel for Johan. Like, I felt bad for him in this book. You know, he's, like, really struggling mentally. He's just feeling really, really down. So I recommend, if you haven't started reading BPRD yet, get it, get into it, man. Get on board. I'm telling you that this is, issue is a huge thumbs up. It's probably my pick of the week. Uh, I know there's not many books, but... Okay, next book, Hexed, number nine, Boom Comics. I'm really enjoying this book. Uh, in the last issue, everything seemed to get turned on its head in this universe. Um, char very important characters have died. Um, characters have made some major turns. Uh, the intern, now known as Rihanna, is uh, honing her necromancy skills. Um, she is dealing with the death of Miss Brizadine. She is the one who owned the Museum of Ancient Artifacts, of Magic Artifacts. Uh, she is uh, honing her necromancy skills in this issue, and she actually conjures up from the ether, which is like the netherworld, Miss Brezidine's deceased cat, also known as Val. You know, Val, Miss Brezidine, got killed along with her cat, got murdered by Lady Cymbeline. Well, Rayana has honed her necromancy skills to the point where she can resurrect things from the ether and pull them out of the ether. So this cat has gotten pulled out of the ether. So it makes you wonder, where is she going to go with her powers? Like, it seems like sky's the limit with her ability to do this. Um... The Keeper of Secrets, who was the harlot in issues 1 through 8, has now manifested into something else. It seems that she's manifested into a human form, uh, and she is now known as... Oh my god, it's like a Spanish name or something. I just had it a second ago, guys. I'll pull this up. Uh, it looks like her name is, yes, Frustrata. Frustrata, and if you remember me showing her in previous issues, remember she looked like an old, decrepit, like wicked witch. Well, that's what she looks like now. That's Bob. That's the character Bob, who's helping Rayana on her mission. So that's all gotten shifted and turned around and turned upside down. So you're wondering a lot about Frustrata. You know, like what's her deal? Why did she change back into this form? And the biggest character, Lucifer, a.k.a. Lucy, is now known as the Thief. And she is the new Keeper of Secrets. So that's gotten all twisted. In the last issue, Lucifer went all fucking Rambo on everybody, okay? Like, she got so pissed about the death of Val, Miss Brizadine, that she just went ballistic on Lady Cymbeline and her crew. Lady Cymbeline was the bad guy. Um, so, I mean, this is just a great book. This is an amazing book. I think that um, Michael Allen Nelson, who's the creator and the writer of this book, has done a tremendous job. I don't see anybody else talking about this book in their polls. And this really is one of my favorite series. I think that Lucifer is one of my favorite characters. Uh, it was interesting reading her as the thief. She kind of wasn't in this issue too much. But it raises a ton of mystery, and then there's an amazing interaction between the thief, a.k.a. Lucifer, and Frustrata, 
aka the harlot in the end and they seem to have this very strong powerful connection from years and years ago and uh, I really wasn't seeing that coming um, Mora Dan Mora does the art and Gabriel Casada does the coloring and there's Rihanna the blonde haired woman she actually looks older and a lot more mature in this issue and she just looks beautiful. It's just like a beautiful style. Um, it kind of reminds me of like anime a little bit. A little bit. Like a very, very toned down, subdued looking kind of like anime. At least to me. At least that's what it looks like to me. Um, and there's always interesting color choices by Gabriel. There's the thief. That's aka Lucifer. So she kind of looks pretty different. She looks a lot more sinister and evil, so we're wondering, you know, what is behind all of this? You know, why is she so consumed like this? Did her anger just get the best of her where she got so transformed? There's some interesting creatures in this book, too, as there always seems to be in Hexed. So I highly, highly recommend it. I don't know why no one else is talking about or reading this comic. I mean, if you're into, like, kind of, like, magic and necromancy and demons and glyphs and enchanted artifacts, I mean, I think there's no way that you're not going to like this book. So I highly, highly recommend this book. Go out and get it. I love it. It's on my permanent pull list, and I plan to keep it there for probably a long time, and I hope this book goes on. All right, I gave in. I actually, I ended up buying a Convergence title. Uh, I got Green Lantern. You guys know that Green Lantern is like my favorite superhero. He's become my favorite superhero. I think he's even surpassed Batman. I just love Green Lantern. Uh, this kind of like is a story with Green Lantern, um, Hal Jordan, and Green Lantern Kyle Rayner. Uh, the Convergence, I guess... Uh, there's this dude, I don't know, begins with a T, I think it's Telios, and he's kind of taken all these important cities from all over the DC universe and has encased them in, like, domes. And in this world, I'm not sure if it's uh, the same in all the other convergent, Convergence world worlds, I can't talk. Uh, all the superheroes in this world have no power as long as that dome is over the city. So Green Lantern, Hal Jordan Green Lantern, uh, is in prison in the beginning of this book, and he is of the belief that he has murdered the entire Green Lantern Corps and that he has murdered the Guardians of the Universe, the Guardian characters. And it's like a middle-aged Hal Jordan. like It's like the Hal Jordan from, like I guess, the 80s and the 90s with the gray hair on the side, and, and he just looks so depressed and so despondent. Have you ever seen a more depressed and despondent face than that? I mean, look at that, man. That's like me when I run out of Doritos, you know what I'm saying? I'm too lazy to go up to the Mini Mart to get more. You know, that's like what that is there, you know? I, even though I don't, I don't eat as much Doritos as I used to, but, you know, that, that was Phil, you know, 2014 Phil. Early, early 2014 Phil. Anyway, um, I guess, too, that Hal Jordan's Green Lantern, there's all these references to the Parallax. Um, and I guess in the Parallax story, uh, Hal Jordan, I guess, got possessed by some sort of entity. And he started killing all members of the Green Lantern Corps and absorbing the power of uh, their rings. And it actually gives a nice little history of the whole Green Lantern parallax timeline. There's him snapping the neck of Sinestro. There's him beating the shit and ultimately killing Kilowog, uh, which interestingly enough, in the current Green Lantern story, the last issue, there was a huge battle between Kilowog and Green Lantern, and it left us with a cliffhanger is that Kilowog appears to be dead. Um, he also killed the Guardians, like I discussed before, and he absorbed all the powers of these rings and the energy from the central battery. And it said Parallax was born and set out to remake Coast City, where Green Lantern is from. So along comes Kyle Rayner, 
uh, to try to stop him. And basically, they have a showdown in this again. And there's a couple other characters in here. There's a Princess Fern, who I'm not really sure who they are, because I never read Green Lantern back then, back in the day. Um, so I have no clue. So if anybody out there knows anything about Princess Fern, uh, let me know because I have no clue. But there's Hal Jordan Green Lantern as Parallax right there. Looking pretty badass. I kind of like that suit. Um, and he has a total... Well, there's some more of them right there. And there's uh, Kyle Rayner, I think. Yep, Kyle Rayner in his Green Lantern suit. And this kind of ends with uh, basically a showdown between those two. Leaves you kind of hanging. Kind of hanging. And this whole Lady Fern is in the mix. And uh, I don't know. I only got halfway through this issue, actually. So I'm going to stick with it. It's only two issues. Um, I've already skipped the convergence of uh, Harley Quinn. I've already skipped Batman. They were doing, like, Shadow of the Bat. I've already skipped the start of Superman. And uh, I forget the other one that I skipped. I think Catwoman. So I really am pretty much not getting into Convergence. I'm getting into Green Lantern, and then maybe I'll buy the Green Lantern core. But that's all that I can really see getting. Um, and that's that, people. So Green Lantern, Parallax versus Kyle Rayner. And finally, Ghosted, number 19. Guess what, folks? I still haven't read Ghosted number 18 or 17. It's part of my backlog, part of the problem. So I apologize. I don't know anything that's going on in this book. I'm buying this simply on the strength of Joshua Williamson, who is, it, who is the writer. And he is the writer of one of my favorite books, Birthright, which I always read as soon as I get it. It's one of those titles where... As soon as I get home from that week, I'm reading Birthright that night. You know, there's, there's, I have a select core group of titles where I'm doing that, where as soon as I get home that night, I'm reading it. You know, if it's Green Lantern, anything Green Lantern re related, I'm like right up on that shit. I'm reading that that night, usually the first one. Anything with Green Lantern, so Sinestro, I actually started to get Green Lantern Corps and Red Lantern, so... Read that right away. Um, Hexed, I read right away. Um, well, what else? BPRD, I'll read right away. Abe Sapien, I'll read right away. Uh, Hellboy and the BPRD, I read right away. So it's like all those Mignola books, I'm always reading right, right away. Um, so yeah, so I guess that's the true test of the, the power of a book. Um, so... All right, guys, I'm sorry that uh, the polls have been so short, but hey, guess what? This was only a four-book poll, and I was able to get a 23-minute-plus video out of it. Isn't that? I'm pretty good, aren't I? And hopefully you were entertained. And Nintendo and the Amiibos, get this shit straight, man, because you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to buy any more Nintendo product until you guys get the Amiibos that I want on the shelf. Fuck you, Nintendo. You shouldn't have such a hard time making these things when you know that the demand in North America is through the roof. There's just no excuse. I don't understand the, the logic behind that. You know, you have people that are just saying, I'm ready to give you my money, Nintendo. I am ready to give you hundreds of dollars. I want to buy, like, every Amiibo I can at this point. I'm so frustrated I can't find the ones that I really want. It's also a problem with uh, the 3DS, the Majora's Mask, a limited edition. So they say, 3DS, you couldn't find it anywhere. People were buying it pre-orders. And then these fucking scalpers take an item that should only be $200, and they're selling it at double the price on eBay. And I'm not going to pay for it. Same with the Majora's Mask limited edition uh the game and it, it came with a uh, little statuette a little figurine of uh i think it's the skull kid i really wanted that i really wanted that and it should only be 50 bucks that's what it is but again 
You get the fucking scalpers that come in and buy all the shit up and then sell that for like $150. I'm not going to do it. I'm just, I'm not going to play that game. I'm not going to play that game. And I suggest to everyone else, don't buy from scalpers. Because if you don't buy from them, maybe they'll get the hint. And there won't be any, you know, reason for them to do this because they're not going to make more money. When these scalpers, these assholes who somehow seem to have the ability to buy multiple copies of a game or of Amiibo because they make it their life's mission to camp out at like Toys R Us, to camp out at the computer. I was on the Amiibo tracker, okay? There's this um, website. It's called AmiiboTracker.com. And it lets you know which Amiibos are in what stores. And I read some of the comment sections of the people that are on this thing. There are dudes that are claiming, you know, they'll make content. They've been on there for like 48 hours straight, 72 hours straight, just waiting for things to get in stock in order to buy an Amiibo. I can't do that. I'm not going to do that. You shouldn't have to do that in 2015 to get a product, to get a, a, a toy, you know? It's just not worth it to me to do that. And then you may say, well, Phil, well, that's what it takes. That's what... No, no, because Nintendo could make more. They could make more. They have people begging them to give them the money, and they're not responding. All they do is they keep making these commons, the Luigi's. The Mario's. I already have every common amiibo that you can get. I have about, I don't know, 22 amiibos at this point. I have every one that you can get that's readily available in stores. And now it's all these rare ones or unicorn ones as they're called. If it's a retail exclusive, like a Rosalina at Target, Meta Knight at Best Buy. If it's a retail exclusive, Gold Mario at Walmart. Those are like impossible to get. Impossible to get unless you, A, you know, you wait in line like overnight. You're camping out on the internet constantly hitting F5. Refresh, 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 refresh. I can't do that. There's just no way. I work a regular job. I just got called for motherfucking jury duty. How am I going to get out of that? I don't want to do that. I got to call this weekend to see if I have jury duty. Do you believe this? Look at this shit. <sighs> you know, real people have real responsibilities in life. All right, anyway, enough. I'm sorry that I didn't talk completely about comics, but hey, it's collectible, all right? All right, dudes, let me know uh, if your pull has dramatically decreased because you're not buying DC or as many DC titles during Convergence. And I'll see you guys next week. All right, peace.